then through the other dot can you see into the camera. Okay, part two of the telescope demonstration. You can see that this, this telescope has a tripod and a, what's called a counterweight. Now the point of the counterweight is the counterweight should really balance the telescope when the telescope is put on its side. So if I get my telescope and put it, which I will do shortly, and have it on its side, it should be that the, the, the counterbalance here, the weight here, should, should counterbalance the weight of the telescope in two ways. One way it should counterbalance the actual weight itself if you take the pivot point of the telescope uh, about the axis here and then the other thing it should do is that the telescope itself should be balanced. In other words this tube I've got here which has got clamps on it, you probably would be able to see them better on this side, There's just one clamp there, This that clamp actually clamps the tube of the telescope and what you don't want is for that clamp to be too loose. If it's too tight, obviously it's going to cut into your tube. What I did in my telescope is I actually put some tape underneath the clamp. This bracket here at the back is useful for putting cameras on or a smaller telescope on. Uh, and I do have a small spotter scope which could go on there. Um, and you can piggyback things on that. Also handy for piggybacking things like digital cameras or such like and some digital cameras do have long exposures while we're on that subject I've taken quite a few shots through the eyepiece here which which you'll be able to see um, using a very simple video camera okay this is a good example of daylight astronomy here if you're able to see the moon during daylight and the telescope as you can see here is a conus it's a 114 millimeter telescope and this is your finder scope here now if I look through crosshairs here, if I bring the camera up to the crosshairs there, you should be able to see. It's difficult to see there, but the moon is there on the crosshairs there, and I have to put the moon there on the crosshairs there. But that should mean that the moon's visible in the main telescope area here, which is here. If you pass me the camera there, I'll see if I can focus on the moon there. It should be visible there. And it is. So. Difficult, slight, difficult to see in the daylight sometimes, but there it is. If I zoom slightly. should be able to see it there. There it is. Okay, if you just carry on then. This telescope has been set up for rough, rough polar alignment, which means that this um, pole, this is the polar axis here, and this should be parallel to the um, Earth's pointing to the pole star. And the moon, as you can see over there, is setting and it's on a last quarter. I wonder if you, if you put that on program, Jane, if you're able to zoom in on it. see it. it. You zoom right in on it. That's it. That's the view through the camera. But if you use the telescope, obviously, I'll try again to get a better photo. November is a month when there are a number of interesting things in the sky, including meteor showers on the 15th and 16th, which I'll try and keep you updated with. But for now, we see the moon setting last quarter